Hello everyone, Nathan here with a behind the scenes look at the Time Machine Explosion file. Now, you've all seen the animation already, I'm sure, but in case you haven't, let's scrub through it real quick. Boulder rolls down, smashes building, explosion. Pretty much the end. Um, just want to point out all of the physics here, like so the boulder rolling, smashing building, all this stuff. This was all done by Timothy. Great work. I have to say, so very thankful he did that. I couldn't tell you how many hours I spent trying to get these little bits here to explode just right. Excited that was, that was just a particle system. And all some of the pieces fly through the hill, like this one right here. It is what it is. I don't feel like spending more time to fix it. So we've got that. Um, basically, everything is rendered with cycles here, which is a relatively photorealistic. Uh, render engine for Blender. It's the new one. And then we have the older internal render engine, which pretty much has a full copy of the file here. Um, in this scene, though, there is... should show up at some point. Or not show up, but it is there. There's the smokes. So although it's not showing here, or here, either for some reason, there is the all the smoke going on in this scene except I don't know exactly why it's not oh what am I doing I'm an idiot okay that's all cycles here we go so we have another scene which is the internal scene it's pretty much just an exact copy um, but this one has the explosion and else is gonna make the video drag but we've got that explosion and then later there's, well, the inside here you never even see, actually. And then we have the outside explosion with the fireball and everything. Uh, basically, all that's done in this scene is we're rendering the smoke and the fire explosion here, and then this smoke here, and then the shadows from those two. Because currently Cycles doesn't support smoke. Well, it, support for it just came out, but I don't feel like learning it all right now. So, yeah, we're still using Blender Internal. Plus, it's a whole lot faster. Um, so, yeah, this is basically our compositing node tree here, which takes us from, well, the image you just saw to this image. We layer everything together. It's like a big old recipe. So we start. I'm not going to give you totally detailed everything here and just a few of the things. We have our initial, just the scene. Then we have some lovely noise that I'm actually using for a heat displacement so we kinda get a semi-realistic heat displacement it's not physically accurate at all but send a good look I also have a bad mouse that likes to click when I'm not clicking here we have a shadow from the smoke which is being cast onto the ground in the internal scene and then lastly, and most importantly, of course, the fire. So, basically everything just gets layered together on top of each other. Um, kind of have a little color ramp here so I can control the color of the shadow. If you look at this, voila, we have the shadow now in the scene where it previously wasn't. Now, um, I did have to do a little bit of creative hacking here, which isn't really hacking, um, but I had to do a little bit of creativity. Because shadows were originally showing all over the place where they shouldn't be. Like, let me pop this back. Like, there'd be shadows on this brick. Well, there shouldn't be shadows on the brick because the light's coming from, well, more outside of the screen. Like, where your head is watching this video is where the light source is. So the shadows are all being cast on the back side of stuff. So there should be no shadows from the fire on the front side here. So what we had to do was... We uh, used a option called Material IDs, which pretty much gives you a mask. So this black and white image. So every material that we set up with an ID of 1 has the black, and then everything else is white. So we took that, we actually had to um, invert the color, because actually the original, I'm kind of lying to you, this is what the original is. So we invert it to black and white. Then we uh, did a little dilate on it. 
give it a little bit of a blurred edge so it didn't look so harsh. And then we multiplied, or used that rather, we used that as a factor when we multiplied the shadow here on the background. Because otherwise, if we pull this out, unless we get this big ugly shadow that shouldn't be there. So by telling it to use that mask to figure out where to multiply it, we get the shadow only in places where it should be. Then we move on to our little displacement here, which is almost goes pretty crazy right now, but that's because that's the entire image displaced. Then we just have a little bit of displacement around the edges, and that is a dynamically controlled displacement from the fire image here that actually gets converted to black and white, then we do a mathematic operation on it, and then we blur it and use that again as a factor for mixing. So that is the cycle's end of it. And then we have the fire. Now, fire we do a lot too. This is our original fire, which it's good, you know, I can't complain too much, but it can get better. Here we're basically uh, doing a little blur on it and mixing the blur with the original. So it kind of makes it pop a little bit more, makes it a little brighter. And then up over here, we uh, actually take away some of that fuzziness and do a uh, little bit of color correction, adding a little more red and yellows, and put a blur in, or not a blur, a glare, which kind of makes this white line right here a little bit brighter. Then that all gets mixed together and piled on top for the final image. So yeah, this this one scene I spent, I don't know how many hours, but like two weeks, week and a half of working on it. Well, on off days, pretty much like six hours. And other days, an hour or two a day, trying to get everything just so. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. So if you do want anything more in depth, the tutorial on any of this, Drop us a line, I'd be more than happy to create it. And thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting and somewhat enlightening.